Hello there, welcome back. Today I'm talking about the GMADE GSO2F, which is my brand new kit. Just finished building it over the last couple of days. I'm going to do a build review talking about some of the design features and how it differs from its predecessor, the GSO2. GSO2F, GSO2. Um, as you can see, it's pretty different looking from the off. Um, in fact, despite the fact that they're only separated by one letter, GSO2F, GSO2, um, it's probably quicker if I first of all list what's the same between the two trucks rather than what's different. So, what is the same between the two of them? Well, they both come with the same wheels and tyres from the kit. These are the G-Made MT1903 tyres. These are included with both kits. These plastic glue-on, in other words, non-beadlock wheels, are also included with both kits. I've never used these plastic wheels. Um, Yes, this is running different ones. This is the 1904s, same sort of compound as these, but just bigger. These are the AR08 beadlock metal G-Made wheels. Um, used to run them on these, or rather on this truck, and now I've got them on this one. Um, these I had to buy separately, so ignore the fact that these are bigger wheels and tires. They both come with these wheels and tires. Also ignore the fact that this has got a wider stance. Um, I have SSD brass knuckle weights on this truck in order to clear these metal beadlocks I had to use wider hexes so these got 10 mil wide hexes on this truck so the stance is probably five or six mil wider each side than stock so although this one's got a wider stance now the track width and the ground clearance etc the stance is the same on both trucks the body shell included body shell is also the same I bought the Komodo double cab for both of these. It's the GSO2 double cab, GSO2F double cab, Komodo. But word of warning, the roof rack kit and the spot lamp kit for the roof rack does not come with this one. It's, you gotta buy it separately. I did buy it separately when I bought this one because I wanted it fitted with these things. So I bought them in preparation and then when they arrived, that was all good. And then I opened the box for this one and the roof wrap kit and the spot lamp kit were included as standard. So that was a waste of money. The, uh, the pictures on the website do have the spot lamps and the roof wrap fitted, but when the accessories are listed below, it doesn't mention them. It mentions things like, you know, the body bunk bumpers and the, the uh, uh, side mirrors and the wiper blades and all the rest of it, but it doesn't mention the thing. So, I thought it was just, oh, look, this is what you can do, but they are included, so don't buy them separately. So that was a waste of money, but Matthew's very happy because he's just inherited a free roof rack kit and spot lamp kit. Anyway, the body shells are the same. The bumpers are also the same, but I haven't fitted them on this one yet because the bumpers are sort of integrated with the body shell because of the stealth mounting system. So the back one is on the body shell itself. The front one, I just haven't got around to it yet. So yeah, same bumpers. They also have the same shocks, same springs car going past, although the back springs on both these trucks have fitted the, the green rated softer springs. Um, so these are slightly softer than standard, but these are the standard kit ones. They are the same. The shock hoops are the same. You can't see them because the fenders, but yes, they're the same here. The axles are the same. Uh, the chassis rails are the same and some of the braces this brace here, for example, I don't know if you can see it. That one is that one. So some of them, so a lot of the stuff is the same, to be fair. And also the side plates. Side plates are the same. But of course, you can quite clearly see there's a big difference between the two of them. And obviously the first, most obvious, most clear cut, most in your face difference between the two of them is that the new one has a different receiver box location. See? But if you can bring yourself to look past the receiver box, you'll see other differences too, such as the massive fender flares. This one includes them as standard, which is really cool. I was so overexcited about the fact that it's had fender flares. I mean, it's a quantifiable, you know, fully acknowledged, proven fact that oversized fenders make things better. We just know this. I mean, I would fit oversized fenders to this couch if I could. So, yes, that's what we need. Oversized flanders. They look great. Um, they're hard plastic, so they're not, you know, Lexan painted or anything. Perfect. Lovely. 
Uh, different battery location, you can see here this one has a battery here at the front beside the servo. Nice and you know forward bias, but the problem with that is the battery box here is slightly narrow. So you have to have your, if you're using a three cell, you're gonna have it up on its side, which means it sits quite high up. So it's kind of tippy, slightly high center of gravity there. And the new one, you have the motor beside the servo here, and the battery sits behind and relatively low down. It's certainly a lot lower than it is on this one. Um, and the actual base of the battery box is about the same height, roughly, maybe even slightly higher on this one, but because the battery is not up on its side, it's low center of gravity. You can tell overall this has got much better forward weight bias. With, I mean, obviously I've got these brass weights in the front, so there's even more so, uh, but you know, with the motor here, right far forward. The motor was here, it's relatively far forward on this one, but again, quite high up, a bit tippy, a little bit tippy. Um, this one, lower down, further forward. And even when you built it before you, before you put these type of wheels on, or before I put the brass weights on, or before I fitted these stainless steel steering links, because it comes with aluminium ones, although these are also stainless because I fitted them myself, um, you can tell it was much more forward biased than that one. And it does feel like the weight is a bit lower down. What else? What else? What else is different? Oh, don't roll off the table. You can see this one has plastic links all over, which are fine. They're all right. They slide off the rocks easier than scuffed up metal links do. So that was the thinking behind it. And these are nice, still nice and slidey off the rocks, even when they are scarted up. It's not the case with metal. But... They get weaker with age, you know, little vibrations that go through them all the time, and they start to flex more and more, whereas metal is much more consistent. Comes with aluminium links all round, but I fitted stainless on the lower links and kept the lightweight aluminiums on the upper links, just to try and keep the weight down low as much as possible. As I said, front steel ones are stainless steel. I've replaced them. They used to be aluminium. On this one, they used to be aluminium as well, and I've replaced them with stainless, so they're the same in that regard. One of the complaints I had, very, very minor complaint I had with the original, was the fact that the shock hoops were slightly bendy. Slightly bendy, you see that there? So when the suspension articulates, a little bit of that movement is taken up with the movement of the shock hoops. Hence why I've got this brace here, I just made out of some threaded rod, that it's not moving anywhere. I couldn't do it on the front, because the battery was here. So if you put the brace across, you would never get the battery out. Not ideal. You can get uh, SCX102 front hoops to fit. I don't know about the rear, but SSD and some other companies make alloy front hoops to fit the SCX102. GMA do not make alloy hoops for these trucks. I wish they would, but they don't. Not yet, anyway. But the problem with using the SCX102 ones is that the Panhard bar mount is at a slightly different height on the two trucks, even though everything else is the same. So it changes the geometry ever so slightly. So it's hence why I didn't want to do that. But anyway, slightly squishy front hoops. One of my minor complaints, but one of the complaints to the first one, the original, the GSO2. This one has been cured of that. This, oh, this brace also acts as a fan mount on the front here, braces the front shocks. You cannot compress these now. I mean, obviously the fenders are in the way now, but uh, yeah, the brace stops the shock hoops moving. You can see the top of the shock hoop is actually slotted in there. And they can't squish the brace, so therefore, this is making noise. So therefore, yeah, you can't compress that. Same with the back, you've got the brace here, completely cures that problem. So, that's that, like I said on a previous video, G made a good at listening to feedback, and that was one of the examples. People didn't want that flex as standard, because they had to make it their own DIY fix, like this, because obviously, they don't make the alloy shock, shock hoops. So yeah, just cure it, a bit of brace. Another difference between the two, you can see it's vastly different, is the gearbox. You can see here, quite a small gearbox. Here's the engine mount, or the motor mount rather. Uh, I've got a metal mount there, but it comes as plastic, that's an upgrade. Um, quite small, very central, and that's all there is to it. This one is much larger. The motor's here, and the gearbox goes right under the battery mount, the battery bar, all the way back here. You've got a servo here because it's a two-speed, two-speed gearbox. Completely different setup. Um, this servo is an old plastic geared Futaba, very lightweight. I picked that because it's obviously quite a high bit of weight here uh, that isn't on the opposite side. You've got the, you're supposed to put the speed control on the opposite side. So, hence the little plastic one. It should be up to the job. It doesn't take much force to change gear. Uh, I haven't 
sort of the electronics yet, as you can see. Uh, my radio gear isn't here yet. And also, uh, I've sort of shortened these motor wires because they were, made them perfect for this truck. But the distance between the ESC and the motor is longer on this one, so I'll have to just lengthen them. But yeah, that's, that's an easy job, but it's old, no problem. Yeah, and obviously the big obvious difference of the receiver box, which is waterproof. Very, it's lots of space in it. Um, you get the, the cables that go through a little gap here, but there's lots of sponge squishing them together. Should be pretty waterproof. Um, the original has an extra sort of receiver box or whatever under here, maybe for a winch control or something. A little extra box here. And you can get weights from G made to, to fit in there, which is a bit yeehaw cowboy for my tastes, but you know, whatever. This one doesn't have that. There's no space for it. They have the same drive shafts, I didn't I forget to mention that. They have the same drive shafts, although these two are not running the same drive shafts. These are running metal upgrades, but different metal upgrades. These are the carbon steel drive shaft upgrades. These are the HD carbon steel or something, or whatever it is, the heavy duty ones. Very similar, but slightly different. <sighs> what are you, what? Stay. Stay, good truck. Interestingly, there seem to be slight variances in the same components. Um, the axles on this one, when I first built them, were pretty poor. They were quite rattly. Well, rattly is too loose a word because they were they were quite. There's a lot of resistance in them. They weren't brilliant. I had to shim both axles, um, and they were absolutely perfect. They're so so smooth now. Super slick. This one when I built them, they were a lot more accurate. Um, there's still a little bit of rumble to them, but not very much. No, no more than my G uh, my uh, HPI Venture, for example. They're absolutely fine. However, I do have more shims on the way. Um, and I'm gonna shim these as well, just because these are super slick and I would like these to be the same. One thing they have in common, despite the fact they have completely different gearbox designs, is the gearboxes on these G-Mates are utter works of art. They're so, so smooth and quiet. I can't even begin to describe, but if you had a, a gearbox this smooth and quiet in a high-end racing carbon fiber touring car, you'd be impressed. Um, but they don't really have gearboxes, but you know what I'm saying. Um, the diffs, for example, or whatever. Um, I'll say this, if you're going to a crawler meet, and there's all sorts of people with all sorts of different brands, different models, um, if they're built properly, the GSO2s will be amongst, if not the quietest trucks there. I guarantee it. They're so quiet. This one, was when I first built it, was basically inaudible, apart from the ESC whine. It's amazing. This is why I wanted to get this one perfect as well. So I'll shim these. Um, I'm not, in case you were wondering, I'm not sure what size of shims I used because they were just lying loose. Basically, um, you've got the, the bevel gear and the pinion gear in here. On the, uh, I can see the diff, but it's solid. Um, so you've got one, it's to the side, and they sort of rotate like this, and they're too close together. So if you put a shim on this side of the bearing, it pushes this gear ever so slightly that way, but a tiny amount. It means that they're not so forced together, it's just a little bit more play, and then um, it seemed to quiet down. I had to do two shims at the back of this one, one at the front of this one. Um, however, both these axles are better than these two were. So I imagine just one thin shim on each and it'll be perfect. But we'll see. I'm gonna try it. Might not, they might not work. They might not weigh enough space because they are seem to have better tolerances. Another thing that should have been the same, but it really wasn't, and I struggled so badly, so badly, was the shocks. I don't understand. I've set both these up for very low rebound. So like when you compress a shock with, without the spring on it, most shocks will doing back open again. Not very fast, but you'll, you'll, you'll compress it and then it'll go back open. Low rebound means if you pull it, they try and close again. They go, because it has low pressure inside. Now, you've got to build them a very specific way to do that. However, these are quite difficult shocks to do that with because dynamically speaking, they're not fantastic shocks. They work perfectly well. I've never had a problem with these. Some people did say they had some problems with leaking. I've never had a real problem with them. They've always worked perfectly. but. Dynamically speaking, they're not great because there's no bleed valve and there's no diaphragm. And it's only got a little rubber o-ring to stop the shocks leaking. That's it. So the differences between 
too much air or too much oil in it and not enough is minuscule in order to get these tuned properly like when it comes to low or high rebound etc um, this one i managed to do pretty quickly within a few minutes maybe half an hour i built all four had them all nice and smooth this one for some reason i don't know why maybe i was having an off day it took me over four hours to get all four shocks set up it was so frustrating i couldn't get them right i could not get them right they were just i, I have it set what i think's right and i put the cap on and it just be massive pressure inside and there was just instant rebound and i just couldn't tune them for some reason even though they're exactly the same as these ones um i can't tell you why i have no idea but I tried it so often that I ran out of the included oil with, and the oil bottle is big that comes with these trucks. I ran out. I had to rob the, what was remaining out of this one, which I still had. So, don't know. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, I got to the point where I was like, no, I'm buying new shocks. I'm buying ones with diaphragms. This is nonsense. But I managed to get them right. It's fine. It's good. It's fine now. They're fine. They're, they're lovely. <laughs> right. I talked previously about how Gmail respond to uh, criticism or respond to feedback from the community really well and implement changes without charging you extra money for it. They've done it for years. And with this one, to this one, the evolution, I did mention in the previous video, they've done it. For example, the braces, they've braced that. There's no movement here anymore. The fenders, people were saying, oh, it'd be nice if we could stop crud getting in with some fenders. Uh, they included them. They didn't just release them, they included them. Um, Oh, it's a nice truck, but it's a bit high centered, a bit, a bit uh, um, top heavy, sorry. Uh, okay, top heavy, let's change all the layout. Oh, it's a nice truck, but what if there was a two speed option? Well, there's a two speed option, you can buy it, but we'll just include it with this one. So you can buy a two speed for this, but let's just include it with this one. Um, oh, it's a nice truck, but overdrive is very popular now and it pushes the performance even further. Well, this one has overdrive as standard, this one doesn't. The overdrive isn't, I don't think it's possible in this one because overdrive is, is actually uh, controlled by the gearbox, not the front axle. However, if you did fit a different gear in the front axle, you could probably do that. But anyway, it comes as standard. They just include it. They're just responding to criticism. They, they've done really well with this sort of thing. I really like the fact that they, they take it on board and they make changes and they don't charge you any extra money for it. This kit is no more expensive now than this one was when it was new. They've just made this one cheaper because they're still building it. There is one complaint, however, very minor that I have, that they haven't fixed between the two of them. And I'll show you. On this one, it's easier. I've done the same for both. See how I've got little red O-rings here, just beside the shocks. The ball end that the shocks are mounted to is much wider than the top of the shock cap. Much wider. So the shock cap rattles back and forward. Um, now, obviously, you need a little bit of movement there because it needs to pivot but the o-ring will allow that pivot in without having it rattle back and forward um that's just very minor but if you're going to cure a little bit of movement here you know there's more movement in that rattle you might as well cure that too so i put o-rings completely sorted that but it's just a bit strange how they're very very good at responding to criticism in little details and let their shocks rattle back and forward whatever so is there actually anything that the old one the gso2 is better than the gs gso2f i got there got there well not really apart from one very small thing that probably isn't going to amount to anything but you see the clearance from the skid plate at the bottom here to the chassis railing skid plates what five six mil maybe probably five mil lower than the, sh than the chassis rails skid plate on this one centimeter maybe which means that the old one has better clearance under the skid than the new one does they were slightly less ground clearance in the center at the skid same ground clearance at the axles same clearing clearance at the links probably, slightly less at the skid. So this one does have one slight advantage, but it's only slight. It's still a fantastic truck. If you are considering a GSO2, as long as you can get it cheap enough compared to this one, because the difference in price isn't massive. 
And if you're looking at the Komodo, for example, and it's the same for the bomb and all the rest of it, but if you look at the Komodo, for example, um, the price difference is not very big, plus the roof rack and spot lamp kit will all but make up the difference in price anyway, and then you have all the advantages that it already owns, or it already holds. So if you can get this one for 50 quid or more or less, maybe 50 pounds roughly, or maybe 50 is even a bit much, maybe 40 pounds or more or less, 50 dollars maybe or more or less, um, then this one would be worth considering because it's still an awesome truck. It's still an absolutely fantastic truck. In fact, um, if you know Tom Lee RC, he did a video of the bomb ready to run straight out of the box. And, you, and it was the GSO2 bomb, not the new GSO2 F-bomb. <laughs> GSO2 F-bomb. Um, and he was completely blown away by how capable it was from the off. So it's still a wonderful truck. But if you pay just a little bit more, yeah, this one's definitely worth doing. The, the, the amount of upgrades, changes, improvements they've made to this one, totally worth it. Totally worth it. Speaking of upgrades, to wind this video up, neither of these are standard. I'll run quickly through the upgrades I did, so you know where I'm at. On this one, stainless steel front links at the front, keep it nice and low, wait further forward, all good. I did use the, use the SSD brass weights and SSD knuckles, but they're now on this one. Metal drive shafts, replace the plastic ones. HD lockers, front and rear, got them in there. Metal motor mount. Metal servo mount. Brace. And most importantly, most importantly, the body has a snorkel. On this one, again, lockers, front and rear. I put the stainless steel links at the front, the stainless links, just like this one. Same, for the same reason. As I mentioned, stainless steel lower links just to bring a bit more weight down. The SSD knuckles are on this one now. Uh, I think that's it. I think that's it. Oh, obviously the, these are not an upgrade, it's just a choice, but I've got the, the lighter, softer springs on each. But I think that's it. Doesn't need a whole lot out of the box. It's gonna be awesome. This one was already awesome. This one's better. So I can't wait to drive it. And thank you very much for watching. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you later. Bye bye.